So in this presentation, we are going to be going over Kevlar. Kevlar is an aramid synthetic fiber that has really high tensile strength and is great as being used as a reinforcing agent in manufacturing of variety of materials and products. So Kevlar was discovered back in 1965 by Stephanie Kolek. And what's really interesting is that she actually discovered it by accident while looking at polymers for tires. And so they discovered this long chain polymer that could be spun into a fiber and that was extremely strong and it turned out to be Kevlar. The molecular formula of Kevlar is C14, H14, N2O4. And as you can see here, this is the organic molecule of Kevlar. And the reason that Kevlar is so strong and so stiff is because of these bonds and the orientation of it. They have to be perfectly aligned and extended in order to make Kevlar as strong as it is. So the synthesis of Kevlar is very similar to that of nylon. For a really simple version, a base chemical is made and then they spin it into fibers. It's made from an amine and an acid chloride. It's held in solution by concentrated sulfuric acid. But then once it's made, it can turn into almost anything. There are very few producers of Kevlar. In fact, really the main one is a company called DuPont. So Kevlar is very versatile. It can be used in body armor, face masks, racing tires, gloves, clothing. It's even found in phone cases. A lot of the protective phone cases nowadays actually have traces of Kevlar in it. But again, the most popular use of it is in bulletproof vests, for military and police use. So the two materials related most to Kevlar are nanocellulose and Nomex. Both, again, are an organic synthetic material, and they're actually both stronger than Kevlar, but how they're made and what they can do and what they can be used in are actually almost the same. Kevlar is 100% recyclable. And it's extremely difficult to destroy. In fact, it will not decompose even if you leave it in a landfill. So the best way to do it is they chop it down into 3 to 6 millimeter fibers or pulp it down and then they re-spin it. So both methods work. It just really depends on the preference of the company because cost efficiency is a really big thing here. For the impact of Kevlar, its synthesis is a safety issue in itself. So it's made in a solution of NMP, which is known for fetal death. But not only that, it's full of acids and chemicals that are potentially dangerous to human skin if ingested, if held around. But the most dangerous is the fact that Kevlar is held in solution by concentrated sulfuric acid, which is potentially explosive. So if one thing is done wrong, lives could be lost, companies could be blown up, and lots of money lost for everyone there. And so Kevlar can cost anywhere from $25 to $50 per kilogram, but whole suits cost $20,000 or more. It really just depends on what grade of Kevlar you want and what it's being used for. So Kevlar is held together by hydrogen bonds, as we saw back in the organic compound of it. And right here, these are just some scanning electron images of it, and just a really up-close look into Kevlar in a microscope. Kevlar is a highly crystalline polymer and if you look at these pictures right here we can kind of see what it looks like. It has a hexagonal close packed shape for its crystal structure as you can see in this top right here and then the bottom picture just kind of shows how Kevlar is put together and how it's formed in the fiber and what it would look like on a cellular level. The mechanical properties of Kevlar are its extremely high tensile strength and how much stress and strain it can handle without losing its integrity or breaking. Kevlar is so resilient, it can handle cryogenic temperatures. And right here on the top left, we can see that Kevlar is being compared to other strains of Kevlar in a stress strain diagram. And on the right side, it's being compared to other materials. And we can just see how much stronger it is than the rest of them, how much more stress it can take before failure. The optical properties of Kevlar are its extremely high biofringence. 
And this is due to Kevlar being yellow when in its natural state. It has a value of about 0.4, but this is nearly higher than any other synthetic material. And no matter what strain of Kevlar you have, it'll vary within this range, but it's still going to be higher than, again, almost any synthetic material. So Kevlar has a great heat capacity because it doesn't melt. It just decomposes. And its thermal stress is also phenomenal because, as we talked about, it can handle extreme cryogenic temperatures without losing its integrity. It can also handle extreme heat. And it retains its integrity, and it doesn't fail. So Kevlar can undergo some basic failure, like simple fracturing. So it can break into multiple pieces. Usually it tears because it's more of a fabric, it's a fiber. And so again, it can handle extreme temperatures. But when exposed to them for very long periods of time, it can still cause degradation and failure in the material itself. It can also undergo corrosion fatigue, and so it's susceptible to chemical attacks. And that's because of its organic makeup. So some corrosion factors of Kevlar is that oxidation and stress corrosion can degradate it. It can fray, it can tear, it will lose its integrity eventually when exposed over a long period of time. And so again, temperature comes into play here. But it really only loses its integrity or only corrodes when it's in very extreme conditions. Just normal day-to-day -day stuff, nothing's going to happen to it. So while we talked about Kevlar going through corrosion, it actually undergoes degradation more than corrosion because they are very dissimilar. So degradation is a physiochemical process, so it can undergo both physical and chemical degradation. And some of its forms of degradation are swelling, and this is when a liquid diffuses into the polymer and is absorbed within it as well. So as we talked about, Kevlar is water insoluble. When exposed to water, it does absorb it, and this can cause it to lose its integrity in what it's supposed to do. It can also undergo dissolution, and this is when the Kevlar is in its constant swelling state. So this is when it surpasses swelling, that it's just constantly in solution. So that is it for Kevlar. Uh, I really hope you enjoy the presentation and maybe learning some new things maybe you didn't know before.